Hey guys, Sen here, back again with some more Capital Raids, and today is a special video because we just hit 100 subscribers here. To celebrate, I challenged myself to face an entire Capital Hall 8 using each and every troop in the Capital. So in this video, we'll watch those replays, and I'll show you how you can use each troop to get the most out of your raid weekends. Since this video has a lot of replays, I've put timestamps to help you skip around to find what you want, and I'll be putting most replays on 2 times speed. Once again, thank you all for 100 subscribers, you guys are awesome, and let's just get right into it. So for this first base, we have Golem Quarry, and I'm going to be using the Flying Fortress. So most people at this level, once they unlock 200 camp space, as well as the 6th spell, like running the Flying Fortress alongside heals or rages, but I prefer using Rocket Looms and Zap to support one Flying Fortress. You guys know I already love uh, the Rocket Looms and it's my main strategy, but I feel like this is just more effective in general because the Flying Fortress can tank for the balloons as they sneak in to assassinate the enemy defenses, and that'll keep your one Flying Fortress alive for much longer than they otherwise would. So you'll see, I'll send in the Flying Fortress, and once it takes the aggro of the enemy defenses, I'll start sprinkling in my rocket balloons to help DPS those buildings. The Flying Fortress is really slow, so you do have to support it with uh, your balloons to help make sure it doesn't take too much damage while slowly pushing through the base. And so as the Flying Fortress is flying through, I'm going to support it with more balloons on the sides to take out the defenses that it's eventually going to path to, and also the loons are going to help push in through the back end of the base. I like this strategy also because I feel like it gives me more control over the attack. Flying Fortress padding can be extremely unpredictable, and having balloons and zaps to support it and uh, shave the pathing for it can be extremely effective. So here we have Dragon Cliffs, and I'm using Sneaky Archer Rage against it. So Sneaky Archer Rage is basically a mandatory strategy that you have to use against this base because it has those annoying uh, defensive super dragons, and there's not that many ways you can take them out. One way you can take them out, like you'll see in this replay, is I use an offensive uh, super dragon of my own, and while there's no other defenses tanking, it's able to trade one for one with a defensive one. The reason I do this is because if you're using archers to take out defensive super dragons, you almost always need to have a rage or else it's going to take too many camp spaces of archers. So I was just able to trade away that defensive super dragon for 40 camp space and that was pretty good value. I'm also able to use those rages deeper into the base because archers, they use their stealth ability to help snipe down defenses inside the base and you can use the Rage's speed and damage boost to help them go crazy through higher hit point structures like the Blast Boat and the Inferno Towers on this base. You'll see I just take advantage of the Sneaky Archer's ability and I'm able to get down so much of the base in terms of area targeting defenses. This is pretty much a must know strategy in the Clan Capital, it's one of the strongest attacks it's pretty easy to pick up and learn, and that's why most people are using it. It's also kind of oppressive in a way that there's not much defense against it. You have to uh, make sure that your traps are well placed to hit the sneaky archers while they're in stealth mode. So for this next replay, I'm going to be using more super dragons, and my advice for super dragons is generally avoid using them in the clan capital. Uh, especially like this where you're using more of them at once. Uh, the reason being is that super dragons are in a really bad spot right now, not because they're bad, but because all of the other air options are just so strong. The Flying Fortress and the Rocket Balloons are some of the top tier strategies in the clan capital right now. So it's really hard for super dragons to find their place. But, but uh, the one place that you can use the super dragon is against Dragon Cliffs because of those pesky uh, defensive super dragons, your super dragons can help push through them, unlike the other air troops that are available in the game.
Here we have Builder's Workshop and I'm using P.E.K.K.A Raid Cart. So P.E.K.K.A is a big bulky unit and it can also deal a lot of damage whereas the Raid Cart is a ranged uh, unit that can support the P.E.K.K.A from behind. Now the Raid Cart recently got nerfed and it's been in a really bad spot so before once the raid cart got in range of its target, it would shoot its shot immediately, but now it has to wait, I believe, 0.6 seconds, and that nerf was huge in making the raid cart go a lot slower, and it'll take a lot more damage. You'll notice that I also screwed up, and I basically swagged two raid carts down on the bottom, but uh, I'm still able to push through with my P.E.K.K.A.s in that last raid cart, and let's see how far I can get. So because the raid cart got nerfed, uh, I consider it to be one of the worst troops, and the P.E.K.K.A was the main troop that people were using to support it. So the P.E.K.K.A in a way also got nerfed because uh, it was the main troop that you would use with the raid cart. However, the P.E.K.K.A does have one more use, and I'll be showcasing that in the next replay. So the main way that you can use P.E.K.K.A at, an, at a higher level right now is using it to tank for hogs. So the P.E.K.K.A can tank big bulky splash defenses like the Blast Bow and the Giant Cannon, uh, whereas the hogs will get absolutely destroyed by them. So you can send in your P.E.K.K.A from the side to tank those big splash defenses while your hogs work their way through and you're able to get value from that, your P.E.K.K.A that way. And hogs are pretty simple. They're ground targ they're ground based uh, defense targeting troops that you can just throw heals on, keep them alive through the base, and they'll push their way through jumping over walls. At this point, it's just a matter of cleanup and we'll times for it. Here we have Balloon Lagoon, and once again, I'm using Sneaky Archer Rage, so I'm just gonna fast forward through this replay. I bring in some Skelly Barrels over here because I notice that there's no splash coverage over these point defenses. I stagger drop my Skelly Barrels to make sure that they don't all pop out at once and get hit by a bomb or something like that. And now it's just time to use Sneaky Archers to push through this side of the base to get as many defenses as I can with their stealth ability. As you can see, the raise just makes the Sneaky Archers do so much damage, and they can get so much of the base. I also try to be creative and bring some Super Wizards to chain off of this District Hall, but I don't get far enough with my Archers and the Wizards just die off, so that didn't really work out. And now, I try to end this attack with Hogs, and I use uh, one Rocket Balloon, hopefully to go up and take out this Bomb Tower. As you can see, this doesn't work out either, and the bomb tower survives on a sliver, so I just drop one hog so that the rest of my hogs don't get hit by that, and I drop in a giant to help tank the rocket artillery for a little bit before sprinkling the rest of my hogs. I don't drop all of my hogs in the same spot so that the rocket artillery splash damage can't hit them all at once. I also bring some skelly barrels uh, to help tank for the inferno tower and the other point defenses. I notice that there's no splash over there as well. Now it's just time to drop hogs and heals and see how far they can get in the base. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get this base down in two attacks, and so this was the base that ruined me, and so I wasn't able to get this clan down in 15 attacks. You'll notice this gets really close though. The skeletons end up dying to a little bomb, so once again, you want to be careful with your skeletons so that they don't get killed by those. As you can see, there's just one cannon left, and... I'm not able to get it down because of one little bomb. And out of tilt and rage, I just throw all as many units as possible into a, an army composition and just spam them all in. Next up we have Wizard Valley and I bring giants and wizards to this attack. So super wizards can chain to a secondary target within one tile of their first target for 40% damage and giants can uh, tank for them. They're big bulky defense targeting troops like the P.E.K.K.A except uh, they have, they're smaller, have more HP for housing space and do a lot less damage. So super wizards can chain off the district hall which has a lot of HP and do a lot of damage to the defenses around it. 
I also bring Skelly Barrels on this attack because this top side, I noticed, has very little splash coverage on it. And so even when there was that small bomb that appeared, uh, because my Skelly Barrels didn't all pop at once and I spread them out and staggered drop them, uh, the Skelly Barrels skeletons survive and they're able to get so much value pushing through this top side of the base. You'll notice that they're basically unstoppable unless there's uh, some trap that hits them and you'll notice once there is they immediately just all die. <laughs> so you have to be very careful when using them. But one really good usage that I've found for the Skelly Barrel is using them alongside hogs on Wizard Valley. You just bring one or two of them and they can help deal with the, the defensive raid cart that your hogs can't hit. The defensive raid cart fires really slowly so skeletons are easily able to swarm it and overwhelm it and kill it. That thing is really annoying for your hogs because they, uh, they can't target it until they're at cleanup. So I'm able to deal with the rest of the base using hogs and heals and at this point it's just a matter of cleaning the rest of this trash. You guys know what time it is now, it's time to use Rocket Loon Zap against the Barbarian Camp. Rocket Loon Zap is my favorite attack in the clan capital right now and I highly recommend you learn it. It's one of the strongest attacks when you learn it, but it's also one of the hardest to learn. So you'll notice the way it works is you, you use your zaps to take care of uh, air targeting defenses that are located uh, deeper inside the base, and then you use your rocket loons to trickle in and target the defenses that are located near the outside. Rocket loons are extremely strong at one for one buildings. They haste into their targets, and with their initial bomb drop, as well as their on, uh, on death damage, they can take out most structures as long as they're able to get on top of them. So you'll see I'm just strategically removing the air defenses on the base, and by the end of this attack there's not even going to be that many left on the base, and that'll make my second attack with rocket loons to be able to take care of the rest of this base. So right now I'm just figuring out where I want to drop these last two zaps, right there, and heading into the second replay. Once again, I go in with more rocket loons, more zaps, and I'm able to take care of the rest of this base. Let's watch how I do it. So first I push into this top side with rocket balloons, and this bottom side with rocket balloons on the spear thrower, and that'll be that'll make it so that these this top side is cleared of air defenses and they can slowly work their way down. As they're working their way down, I start going with the rest of my rocket loons over to the rest of the base to help swarm this rocket artillery. And at this point, it's just a matter of cleanup and we'll fast forward. So lastly, we have the Capital Peak, and against this base, you almost always want to bring a lot of Barbarians and Archers because it has a lot of these trash buildings. So I'm bringing Barbarians, Archers, Minions, and Rocket Loons. The Rocket Loons can help take out the defenses and open the way for my Barbarians to clear the trash without being interrupted. So I just uh, one for one a lot of buildings with the rocket balloons, which is what they're really good at, and so they're especially good on the capital peak. And then once the rocket loons clear the defenses, I just send a barb in behind, and I make sure to protect my barbarians, keep them alive for as long as possible. And as you can see, I've already cleared the way towards the capital peak. And notice how I drop these camps of archers. You can actually split archers as long as you drop them in between two buildings. And so you can get archers on both of them at once. And on this next attack, I'm finally going to be using the golem. So the mountain golem is the largest troop in the game, 160 housing spaces. It can walk through walls and crush them and it's really bulky and slow. Uh, I also think the Mountain Golem is in, in a really bad spot right now because uh, it just moves so slowly and it's so painful to watch in my opinion. 
uh, and it just gets beat down by all the defense firing at it as it's just slowly walking towards them. I also do my signature wizard bomb. So I use the mountain golem to tank this giant cannon, this rocket artillery in the clan capital. And so my wizards uh, with a heal, heal and rage are only targeted by this giant cannon. The heal can out heal that and the wizards can chain everything around the capital peak. Once again, I have a video on that. Uh, you guys can check it out if you're interested, but it's a really cool strategy that I love using against the Capital Peak because the Capital has so much HP. So the Golem now is just slowly moving through the base, and we'll just times 4 it because, yeah, you can see the, the Golem moves so slowly, even at times 4 it's just slowly waddling through the base. On this last attack, I'm going to show you a really cool trick that you can use with minions. I go with my signature Rocket Loon Zap. Of course, uh, there is no better way to end a 100 sub special on this channel than to use Rocket Loon Zap, but you can use minions not only as a cleanup troop, but they can sneak into the dead zone of the blast boat and the rocket artillery. As long as there's no other defenses firing on them, they can pick those things off so you can get a lot of value out of them that way. And at this point, I just go in with my rocket wounds, I target them in, and you'll see just how much I'm able to swag on this base. I think I have five rocket wounds left that I don't even have to use. Oh, six of them actually, so uh, there's not a more fitting ending than to end off with a beautiful rocket wound zap attack. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thank you all once again for 100 subscribers. It's so amazing to see so many people watching and engaging with my videos, so thank you all and have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care, y'all.